Okay, so we're going to uh, go through um, layers and adjustment layers and how they're going to be applied to your photos. I'm going to go through three different photos today. Um, an animal, um, a people type shot, and a scenery shot. So, first thing, we'll start with um, the people shot. I've already made some adjustments here, so I'll just delete these for the moment. Now, I've already taken this uh, photo through the develop persona, so I've made sure there's no blown out whites uh, and no blacks, true blacks, so that uh, I can do any adjustment I like and but first of all what we're going to do is is just explain layers to begin with so we've got the basic photo here and I'll be working in this panel 90% of the time now what we can do just to show this is add another layer and what I'm going to do is just draw a square and give it a color there we go. And what we've now got is this rectangle, which is on the right here above the photo, sitting on top of the photograph. So layers, you can literally think of the original photo and then a bunch of um, pieces of paper on top, which affect the photo underneath. Now the basics are, uh, this is now sitting on top, and if I grab it and drag it down, the blue square is now sitting underneath the photo, so it's having no effect whatsoever. If I turn off the background, you can see the blue square, square on a transparent background. What I'll do is I'll move it back above, and you can see it again. Now it's unlikely that you, you, you want the adjustment to be global over the entire picture. So for that, you can um, wipe out areas that you're not interested in. So what we can do um, with any uh, image is um, add a mask. So now, basically, we have a mask sitting on this, this rectangle. I can pick my paintbrush and if I set my um, brushes to black and white, they have a, a different significance than just painting color. You can see the mask here is white, which basically means show everything that's on this layer, which is a blue rectangle. If I select black, I can start painting out that effect. So I can just run along and you can see the picture underneath. If I make it white, I can paint it back in. There, wherever you don't want the effect to occur, you can use a black brush. Now, you can control this brush several ways. You can control the size using the greater less than keys and make them bigger or smaller there next to the return key. And you have three main options. There are plenty of others, but these you'll use all the time, which is the hardness of the brush. So if I look at that one click, and I've basically punched a hole in, in that layer. And if I take that down to zero, same brush, see it's got a nice, soft, feathered edge. So that's its hardness. Along with that, you have flow. And probably the best way to describe flow is if I um, just quickly just draw one line. Now make the flow 50%. It's like half, half the amount. So to go to do the same thing, I'd have to go over the image twice. So that's quite nice again for, so if I reduce it right down, 
I have to go over it several times to get through the layer. Okay. And thirdly is the opacity. So again, it has a similar effect as flow, but um, it's actually how you see it is different. Um, the more I click, the more I'm showing through into the underlying photo. Okay. Now I can see exactly what I've done on that by clicking, holding the Alt key down and clicking on the mask. It shows me exactly where I've painted. Just click on anywhere else and um, the picture comes back to normal. So again, white brush, um, I'll just fill every, if I increase the opacity and hardness, I can fill everything back in again as if nothing, nothing had happened. So that's basically what you're doing with a, with a layer. And we want to add adjustments to this photo, but we won't want to add it everywhere. So let's get rid of that for the moment and delete it. But just, you just right click on the um, layer you're interested in and select delete. And this picture, I'm going to do a couple of different things. Um, I'm going to add some clarity to the to the main subjects. So, I'll, first of all, what are these layers? So, if I click on layer, I've got two main sections which is adjustment layers, which is like exposure, brightness, white balance, uh, HSL, etc. And you've got live filter layers, which are modifications, shall we say, uh, Gaussian blur, um, different blur options, different um, sharpening options, and twisting and displacing, etc. Now, I, you can use them from this menu, no problem. But in fact, they're also down here, so I tend to use them here. So if I click on the adjustment, I get my levels, vibrance, shadows and highlights, etc. And I say click on the hourglass type uh, option. I get Gaussian blurs and the sharpening, etc. So the first one I'm going to do is add a high pass filter, which is the sharpening layer. And what you'll see is that it's gone to grey. And what I do is I increase, increase the radius until I start seeing the edges of the photo. And basically that's what's being sharpened. Now the problem is here is that my main subjects are being sharpened, but so are the people out in the background. But that's okay at the moment. Let's just leave it at that. And I'll overdo it a little bit just purely because it's easier to see. And what you do is you blend that with the main photograph using linear light. So you pick blend mode, linear light. And as you can see, if I increase it too far, it comes too sharp and I can reduce it back down to its original state. I'll just move it up a bit enough to be seen. And when I'm happy with that, I can just hit the X and delete it and it will just remove it completely or I can reset it. But we've only got one slider bar here, so not really. Uh, okay. So this high pass sharpen has been applied to the entire image. Just like with the blue square, I can pick my paintbrush and I can pick my black. And I can, you can see going over, um, this young lady here, I'm I can remove the sharpening. Now, Affinity gives you this preview before you press the button. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll just make my brush a bit bigger. And on the outside here, I'll just, I can be quite harsh and just go for it. There we go. And down this side, just move the sharpness. There we go. Um, I can reduce my brush and reduce my hardness when I get closer to the couple and be a little bit more delicate about where I remove the sharpness. There we go, just do that side 
Uh, you can see the, his face going back out of focus here. Okay. Now what can be handy is, as I said, if I just hold the Alt key down and click on the image, it shows me where I've painted and I can see I've missed some places. Let's just remove those. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, uh, that's, you know, I'd probably spend more time on that, but that will do for now. Now I want to do almost the opposite. Um, instead of sharpening the main couple, I want to blur out the background so they're more prominent. So this time I'm going to add another layer on top with a Gaussian blur. Now what it's done is it's put it underneath the high pass sharpened. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it out and put it on top of the entire photo. Okay, so this is going to affect um, the background here. So what I can do is increase the radius. And as I increase it, you can see the picture getting more and more out of focus. Now we probably don't want it that far, but we do want the people to be um, blurred enough that they're not, not, it's not the main focus of the, of the photo. Now you'll also see here that the edges have almost gone, well, they have gone transparent. And that's what alpha means. So if I preserve alpha, if I tick that, it maintains the edges of the picture, which is what we want to do. Okay, that's fine. I just hit the X. Now what I want to do is, is the same thing. Um, I want to remove the Gaussian blur from the main couple. So again, I'll go 100% and I'll just trace around the basic edge of the couple. There we go, and take out the middle. So they're now coming nicely back into focus. And I can do the same trick, hold the Alt key down, click on the image, and fill in the bits that uh, I didn't quite spot. That just gives me a, a basic outline. Go back to the, now what I'll do is I'll reduce my hardness, and I can be a little bit more subtle in where um, we remove it. There we go. So I'm not going to spend uh, hours doing this, but as you can see, I went over the edge there a little bit. So I pick white and I can paint, paint the blurring back in. There we go. Go back to black and I can just tidy up that edge. And if we come down, you can see that it's, I need to remove it from here. So just bring that back into sharpness. There we go. And I would just continue this until I get the subjects uh, exactly the way I, I want them. And you can see there, I'm just improving the selection. And I'd continue that all the way around uh, the photo, just blending it in uh, using a soft brush until I got what I want. So now you can see um, the people behind are now not so distracting, but their color is a little bit um, off, a little bit too white. So I'll go back to the background again and I'll pick a HSL which is basically um, hue, saturation, and luminosity. And I'll look at their actual faces, and what I'll do is I'll increase the saturation, move it up until there's a little bit more color in, in the cheeks, not too much. There we go, I'm happy with that. And I can do the same thing, I perhaps don't want um background to be so bright 
because again it's distracting so again I can use the paintbrush pick black make the brush a bit bigger and just take out that increase in color from the background and just so that they're less distracting and I don't have to be too heavy-handed and you can see straight away the difference we've made so what I'm going to do is uh, untick the high pass sharpen and we'll just go back to the original picture and you can see the difference there so I'll just select all the items and turn them on there we go turn them all on turn them off oops um, this is embedded in the background it doesn't have to be I can just move that above and that makes my life a little bit easier so I can select all three and turn them on and off and you can see the effect to the photo so these layers are basically sitting on top of the uh, original photo the background and they're being applied but by using the black and white brush I can say where that is going to be applied and where it's not going to be applied right we'll take our second example now and go to uh, the cat and again I'm going to um, delete the adjustments I've already made in fact I'm going to rewind my history this time so you can use undo here um, but there's also another method which is this history box down the bottom and I can see everything that I've actually done and what I can do is I can I can either just click on a particular item and it's undone all these actions and I can go back and I can go forward again okay the other way is just to move through the history and undo everything so that's the original photo I brought in from um, the developed persona so again I adjusted it so that there was no uh, blown highlights and no uh, oh, nothing too black problem was was that on this particular image it was very difficult to get rid of although it's not strictly speaking blown out um, it is much too bright to the to the rest of the image so like most good things a crop can do wonders for a photo so I'm going to just move the edge in move the bottom in move the side in a little bit leave a little bit of room on on this side move this in maybe a little bit more and apply unfortunately we've got some bits of leaves and what uh, still at the bottom here so I'm going to digress slightly here and I'm going to use my uh, in painting tool and if I just click on that what I can do is just paint on that item there and what it will do is a look at the surrounding area and try and fill it in um, from that information there we go and I'll try to do the same thing here just give it a second there we go so there's a little bit of light at the bottom um, I can just try that one more time so I'm affecting the the, the, the main picture here um, in this particular case because I haven't made any layers there we go okay now I think that one last more than that will, that will do it for now I'll probably do a bit, little bit but better job in real life okay now we're going to do a, a similar thing but instead of using a, a blur uh, we're going to darken the image in the background and lighten the image in the foreground so that the, the cat sticks out much more sharply so usually my first operation would be to add a, um, a, a sharpness layer and one of my favorites is the high pass filter so I will add that as a layer I will increase the 
until I get the eyes. There we go. And I will do a blend linear light. Okay. And we can see it's sharpening the, the eye area and the muzzle in particular. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is, um, I, don't, I don't think it really matters about, I'm going to darken the background so I don't really need to brush out sharpness on, on, the, on the wall behind it. So again, I pick the background and this time I want to darken the image. So I'm going to go for an exposure. So um, if we look at the exposure, and what I can do is reduce the exposure down over the entire image until the background is dark enough that it's it's not intruding on what we're on the on the actual main subject. I'm happy with that. But we're obviously taking the cat out. So again, I pick my painting brush and I pick black to remove the effect. And you can see if I hold the, the mouse over you can see the effect it's going to have. So again, I would do the main area first, 100%, reduce my brush size to something reasonable, and just paint that, um, paint the main area in quickly. There we go. So it's coming out. I've then reduced the brush, um, go up into the areas there we go and then reduce my hardness and then i can just gently feather in um, the actual ears there we go come down the edges here just gently go over And you can see there I've gone a, gone a little bit too much. So go back to white and I just want to fill this in slightly. There we go. And do the same this side. Go back to black to get the main edges in. There we go. I'm rushing this obviously. Because I'm sure you don't want to watch me do a painting lesson. That you're getting the hopefully you're getting the the adjustment there as you'd expect it's just been in vain and the top of the head here just till that comes through there we go so we've got our, our basic adjustment there just get that corner right again alt click on the icon and i can see that i've missed a couple of bits and pieces just fill those in there we go. You're done. Right. So now the background's much less distracting. It's not completely black. You can you can see uh, little bits of detail. It's up to you if you want to keep that or not. Um, but what I want to do is bring out the colour and the clarity of uh, of of the actual cat itself. So if I move into here, I, I can add a clarity filter. Um, and what it's done is it's put it underneath. So what I can do is drag that so it's above the background. Oops, sorry, I'll put it, move it to there so it's directly above. What I'd done when it was in here, that would the clarity would have only been applied to the exposure. So by pulling it down and out, it's now sitting directly above the background. So if I increase clarity you should be able to see if i just quickly move it very sharp softer i can increase the clarity and make the fur uh, pop a little bit you don't want to overdo that but that, that will do for now yes it's affected the background but because it's so black it, you can't really see it, so I'm, I'm not going to bother trying to paint it out. And uh, uh, what else I want to do is 
uh, increase the color. So again, um, HSL is a good way of doing that and just increase the uh, saturation and just bring that up a little bit. There we go. And again, because it's a black background, yeah, it's not really affecting the main image, uh, the, the main background there. Okay, um, for ease of use, I'll put the high pass filter there. Now, I can turn them off individually, turn them on individually. If I hold the shift key down and, uh, sorry, First of all, pick the top layer and then hold the shift and pick uh, this high pass sharp and it picks everything in between. And then I can turn them off on and off as a group and you can see the effect on the photo. Okay, so from this original background, we've added one, two, three, four layers on top. Some have um, uh, used a selection brush to paint in or paint out the effect. Um, but they're basically all merged together. Okay, um, we'll now go to our final uh, picture. This this one, it, we've all had the problem. We've taken a picture at um, midday or thereabouts, so everything's um, a little bit blown out. Let me go back to the original photo. Let's just delete adjustments you can see there it's 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 pretty much uh, fairly flat and there's a couple of things we can do we can do a similar thing to what we've done before so um, I could add a brightness on contrast so what we can do is um, increase the contrast a little bit that brings that in uh, the brightness bring it down a little bit maybe and increase the contrast again. Okay, happy with that. I can just quickly turn it on and off to see the effect. So it's giving it a little bit more depth uh, to the to the feel of the image. And what we might want to do is, is put a graduated filter on top. Now this is slightly different. As you've seen, everything I've done so far pretty much uh, creates the effect and gives you a, a mask automatically. Um, for a for a gradient at the top here, what I need to do is add add my own layer. So I'll, I'll just add a layer there and it puts it on top. I'll add a gradient. That's this button here, and I just draw from the top and just come down as far as I want. Uh, let's say about there. It's actually the wrong way up. So. Um, what I do is I'll reverse the gradient just by clicking that button here. Um, you've got other um, buttons here, whether it's linear, um, elliptical, radial, um, but we actually want linear in this case. And what I can do is uh, make some adjustments here. So let's click on this button here and um, affect the opacity um, oops sorry affect the opacity of it you can see the the sky coming through there I can change um, the effect so at the top um, what I really if, if, if I click on here you can see the the ends changing. Okay, so um, at the bottom here, I might want a very low opacity. Okay, but at the top I want a a hundred percent opacity. So basically, this is fading out to nothing. Now the top, it's using a grey colour, but I could enhance the picture by say picking a a blue. And it will actually fill the sky in in blue, or you might want to prefer a, a yellow or an orange and give it a give it a sunsetty colour. But I'll, I'll stick with blue. There we go. Uh, might make it a bit lighter. You can play around with that. And again, I, I can play with the opacity. So that if it's too strong, I can reduce it. 
So I can just play around with that opacity. This central bar here, it's basically changing how far down the gradient goes, the central point. So you can, you can adjust that. Okay, so when I'm happy, um, you know, and I can grab, grab that and I can move it up and down. So I can actually bring it to here. As you see, it's clipping, clipping the trees. They're make, making those a little bit uh, um, colorful. So again, what I can do is um, click on the layer, add a mask and use my paintbrush again. So I can come across, pick black, come into this area here and remove that um, um, gradient from, from the trees. So it's not affecting that part of the picture. Um, it's also true of the people. So I can just do that, just take it off him. There we go. And again, take it off the bushes at the side. Right, so there we've added a gradient and a brightness contrast to that particular picture just to make it punch a little bit more. And again, if we just look at on and off, we just turn them off and turn them back on again. You can see the change in, in the photo. So that's basically a, a quick guided tour of using layers. Okay, uh, one thing you do tend to do uh, with layers is actually use um, uh, selection areas as well. So this will be covered in another um, uh, tutorial, but just to show what you can do, um, if I want to select the sky, I could pick a brush, just paint in area here and you see the marching ants as they call them um, that selected this area and if I can refine it let's just have a little look um, and if I just increase my brush a little bit you can see it hasn't oops let's just get it to relook at this area here it's now selecting the fronds there we go, just go around and select those right. and do the same over here. And this little, the, the size of the uh, pick does, ha does have a, an effect. Right. So we've got a much tighter selection there and just hit apply. So now my, my selection um, is set. So now when I do an adjustment, it will only be applied to that area. So um, let's look at brightness contrast. Let's increase the contrast so we get a little bit more detail in the sky. Not much on this day, <laughs> literally hardly any clouds. But I can adjust that without affecting the rest of the photo. So that's another way. And if I press Alt, click, you can see where I'd normally have painted with a paintbrush to make that black using the marching ants selection area it's done it for me and it's it's done quite a fine job as you can see okay so that will be all the different methods of um, selecting air area will be part of another another uh, uh, video thank you very much